If you're looking to get a MacBook right now, you're probably between the MacBook Air M4 and the new MacBook Pro M5. I've been a user of the MacBook Air for years and after trying the MacBook Pro, I mean, I have to be honest, I think that for most people, the MacBook Air is more than enough. Especially when you consider that during the Black Friday, you could get it for half as much. But even then, the Pro can be a good purchase, especially when you consider its performance. For example, in Geekbench, we can see a solid improvement in CPU performance, but it's in the GPU test where we see a massive jump, getting pretty close to the M4 Pro that's found in more expensive models. The M4 Pro benchmarks that I have actually comes from my Mac Mini, which basically share the same specs of a base MacBook Pro M4 Pro. I added it to this comparison so you can have a clearer sense where the M5 stands, but also, if it's worth it when you compare it with the M4 Pro. Moving on to Cinebench, the M5 sits right in between the M4 and the M4 Pro when it comes to GPU scores. And it's the same story, both with single core and multi-core CPU performance. Then I ran some Pudget benchmarks to compare the performance in real world apps. In Photoshop, for example, the difference between them weren't huge. But in After Effects, the M5 gets really close to the Mac Mini's result. With Premiere Pro, I mean, it's the same way. nearly doubling the M4, and then in DaVinci, it lands between the two once again. This means that if you're using creative apps like the ones I showed you, yeah, the M5 is great, but the real GPU gains are what stand out the most. In Blender, across all tests, it beats the M4, but stays behind the M4 Pro. In 3 d Mark, the difference is huge, and that helps to explain what we will see next. I ran Cyberpunk 2077 benchmark, and while the M5 didn't beat the M4 by a crazy margin, the minimum FPS shows that it's much more stable. Then with Baldur's Gate 3, which I couldn't even install on the air due to lack of storage, we see that the M4 Pro still wins. So yeah, the M5, it's clearly better than the M4, especially on those tests that pushes the GPU, but there are two areas where the MacBook Pro M5 just crush my other Macs. First, the storage speed. The 256GB Air, it's just bad, while the M5 even beats my 512GB Mac Mini. Then we have AI performance, not just CPU-based AI, but once we switch the GPU in Geekbench AI, the M5 dominates. And that's honestly quite surprising giving Apple history with AI. I've been using the MacBook Air for years and honestly, I never felt that I needed more than that. Mainly because I use it for travel, you know, like responding emails, writing some script, and maybe editing a photo here and there, but nothing super demanding. For heavier work, I usually rely on my PC or the Mac Mini M4 Pro, but when I'm doing these benchmarks and I compare the Air with other processors, that's when you start seeing a little bit of its limitations. So yeah, performance-wise, I would say that the M5, it's much better than the M4, but if I was trying to choose between these two MacBooks, I would say that the main reason to buy the MacBook Air, it's because of its size, which makes it super easy to carry around. And considering you get the same keyboard, the same big trackpad, the same 12 megapixel webcam, and almost the same display size, I mean, it's the ideal laptop for students or anyone looking for a secondary machine for travel which it's exactly how I was using it. But when it comes to everything else, I mean, it's not even close. Take this screen, for example. It's a little bit bigger, brighter, higher resolution, and it adds ProMotion for 120 Hz refresh rate. As a proper Pro laptop, you also get some USB ports on one side, but on the other one, you get an HDMI connection, an extra USB port, and an SD card slot. Instead of four speakers, you get six on the Pro, and yeah, they do sound a little bit better. And while the MacBook Air also comes with three microphones, the one in the Pro are higher quality, although the difference is a little bit hard to notice. I also ran a battery test on both of them, streaming a 4K YouTube video at 200 nits brightness, and the Air lasted 12 hours and 7 minutes, while the MacBook Pro hit 17 hours and 19 minutes. But none of this is a surprise because, I mean, you're paying much more for this model and Considering that its design hasn't changed for so long, I wish that the next generation, at least with the M5 Pro, would bring that new redesign. Also, an OLED screen would be great, and if they want, why not a silicon carbon battery? But is that price difference really worth it? For me, that I'm gonna start traveling a lot more and I may need a machine that allows me to edit with Premiere Pro, DaVinci, After Effects, then yeah. 
absolutely. And this is your main machine. You just want one computer then go for the pro version. If that's not the case, and you're looking for a cheap laptop for college and something that it's very lightweight to travel with, then go for the MacBook Air. It's also great and much cheaper. But hey, that's just my opinion. And if you have a different one or any comment, you can leave it down there. I see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.